Hello and welcome to a summary of all you need to know about Manisa Alvi's poem, An Unknown Girl. Now, I'll explain the meaning related to this poem as it appears in the Pearson International GCSE Anthology, and I'll highlight literary and language devices that you need to be aware of, as well as some contextual factors that you need to know when studying this text. So let's get started. Now, do you remember that Maniza Alvi, who resides currently in Britain, was actually born in Lahore, Pakistan, and she came to England when she was just a few months old. So what I'll do is I'll read through stanzas within this poem and pause every so often to highlight literary techniques that you need to be considering when analysing this poem. In the evening bazaar studded with neon, an unknown girl is henering my hand. She squeezes a wet brown line from a nozzle. She's icing my hand which she steadies with hers on her satin peach knee. In the evening bazaar, for a few rupees, an unknown girl is henering my hand. As little air catches my shadow-stitched chemise, a peacock spreads its lines across my palm. Colours leave the streets, float up in balloons, dummies in shop fronts. Now I'll pause there. So the title is really intriguing first off because we wonder who this poem is about. So she's anonymous, she's an unknown girl. And it's interesting because this is repeated throughout the poem. Now, in the first line of the stanza, the reference to a bazaar is actually a traditional Arab Arabic market. So these are traditional markets which have stalls, usually quite busy, lots of different things that are sold. And of course, you find them in lots of Arabic countries, but also you find them in places like India, Pakistan and so on. Now, in the second line, there's the reference to neon. So neon is something which we consider very modern, very Western even. So this colour is actually a contrast to this traditional bazaar, this traditional environment. So there's a dissonance here. Now, the title was repeated, an unknown girl. So there's anaphora here. And it's interesting that although this woman is anonymous, she plays such a central role to the poem. Indeed, the poem is named after her. Furthermore, the enjambment here after Unknown Girl emphasises that this is a stream of consciousness. This poem is a dramatic monologue. The speaker, who we don't know if it's the poem or somebody else, is recalling and recounting this experience. Now this girl is henering her hand and the alliteration here shows just how unique this experience is for the speaker. Furthermore, in line 5, the sibilance she squeezes emphasises the soft and fluid movement of this henna and of course she also highlights the colour, the wet brown line from a nozzle. Furthermore, the present continuous verb icing describes the action of this girl as if she's icing a cake, she's decorating her hand. Also, the speaker tells us she steadies with her, so she steadies the speaker's hands with her own hands. And this could be a symbol of how this unknown girl is giving the speaker a stable sense of her identity. Now, that question of identity is really interesting because if we consider Manisa Alvi's own background, she herself, of course, we can assume has struggled with her identity being somebody who lives in the UK, but is from a different culture. So sometimes that sense of identity can be quite shaky. Now, in this case, perhaps even the speaker themselves have a very shaky sense of her own identity. Moreover, in line nine, we get the pre-modifiers satin peach, and this is a very beautiful aesthetic that's described. Furthermore, in line 11, we learn that she's getting this done for a few rupees and the alliteration for and few emphasises and creates the sense that her culture is actually not that valuable. She's only just paying a few rupees to get something that maybe represents her own culture. And again, there's this anaphora, an unknown girl. The title is repeated like a refrain. Now, in line 14, as a little air catches, now air is personified here and it shows that the outside world perhaps is encroaching on this encounter. Now, in line 15, she refers to her shadow-stitched chemise. Now, the sibilance shadow-stitched highlights that she's in the shadow of knowledge, self-awareness and understanding of her culture. So, in other words, this could be a metaphor for how her knowledge of her culture is quite weak. And she then mentions how a peacock spreads its lines. And this is a metaphor which refers to how colourful her culture is. Moreover, she talks about how colours leave the streets, and this personification just highlights how dark it is getting, the external world is getting, but also we can see that the world is getting less and less vibrant. Moreover, in line 20, she talks about how the dummies are in the shop fronts, and this is a reference to the mannequins that she can see in very upmarket shops and upmarket establishments. So there's kind of a negativity to these mannequins, which are fairly Western. They are dummies, they're mute, and even if they're quite Western, actually, they don't have as much depth as her own culture. So let's carry on. 
Tilt and Stare with the Western Perms. Banners for Miss India 1993 for curtain cloth and sofa cloth canopy me. I have new brown veins and the evening bazaar very deftly an unknown girl is hindering my hand. I am clinging to these firm peacock lines like people who cling to the sides of a train. Now the furious streets are hushed. Now in this part of the verse, she talks about how these dummies tilt and stare and these verbs hint that outsiders or Westerners, like these dummies, perhaps stare at her as she's, when she's dressed in her cultural attire. They don't understand it. Also, her reference to Western perms shows the Westernization. So Western culture really encroaching on this really traditional experience that she has. And of course, what she wants to learn more about her culture. And there's this kind of conflict perhaps that's being hinted between Western ideals that look down on her culture versus her culture, which she really respects and sees as vibrant. Also, she refers to the banners for Miss India 93, for curtain cloth and sofa cloth. All of this is in this bazaar, and this listing adds the busyness and chaos of this scene. And this canopy is her. So what actually this is showing is that she really finds this chaos and this busyness actually very beautiful and really comforting. So all this activity just very much comforts her. Moreover, this declarative sentence, I have new vein, new brown veins, which of course is a reference to the henna, the declarative sentence shows the unknown girl has really taught her more about her culture and her identity than she thought was possible. Furthermore, in line 30, she refers to how the girl deftly uh, henna's her hand, and this adverb shows just how skillful and practiced her movements are. Of course, this could also be a metaphor for how in tune with her culture this unknown girl is. Also, the repetition of an unknown girl is entering my hand. This is constantly repeated throughout the poem. And this repetition in many ways makes it a refrain, something that we keep on hearing over and over again, showing how powerful this encounter has been for the speaker. Moreover, the present continuous verbs, I am clinging, so the verb clinging shows that this speaker really, really wants to cling onto her identity. She wants to cling onto the shreds of knowledge that she's developing. And she's clinging to these firm peacock lines and the adjective firm shows she's gaining a firmer sense of her own cultural identity. And the simile, like people who cling to the sides of a train, actually references to a stereotype of India's notoriously crowded and packed trains, the trains which people, especially in the West see in images of lots of people not only are they crowded inside the train but also on the outside of the train and this is sometimes a very derogatory stereotype however it's interesting that she's really referring to this and owning it furthermore she talks about the streets as furious and this personification shows just how busy indian streets and roads are now you might be wondering when you're thinking about Maniza alvi as i mentioned she's actually pakistani heritage but actually this poem refers to a speaker who's talking about India, so this continuous references to India. However, what she's showing is that she's not only focusing on her own identity and the questions perhaps related to her identity as a poet, but also showing the questions that other people might similarly face when they come from different parts of the globe, including India. Now the poem continues. I'll scrape off the dry brown lines before I sleep, reveal soft as a snail troll the amber bird beneath. It will fade in a week when India appears and reappears. I'll lean across the country with my outstretched, with my hands outstretched, longing for the unknown girl in the neon bazaar. Now, this ending verse is quite poignant. So she talks about how she'll scrape off the uh, henna. Of course, do you remember the process of hennaing? It's uh, this liquid which hardens and you have to remove the hardened part to show the pattern that's on the skin. So of course, she's talking about how she removes this, but actually this could be a metaphor which we could think about as her shredding and chipping away at her identity. So this identity she's learned from this unknown girl is going to gradually fade away the more she sinks back into her normal routine and her normal life. Furthermore, she talks about it being as snuffed as a snail trail, and this simile shows how fragile her understanding of her identity really is. She also talks about how the henna, the colour itself on her skin, may fade in a week. So this emphasises that she fears she may lose a grasp of her culture, and her understanding of her culture is also still very weak and tenuous. Moreover, in line 45, she talks about how she'll lean across a country and this hyperbole shows that she is trying to really understand her own cultural identity within the confines of her life and also within the confines of things that are seen as westernized and more ideal. However, she's trying her best, her utmost to try and understand her own culture. 
Furthermore, the, continu the present continuous verb longing shows she wants to continue discovering herself. She yearns to understand her culture more and she makes anaphoric references back to this unknown girl, highlighting how she really, really admires her and she's teaching her something about her culture. That's all. If you found this video useful, we do have a course covering all the IGCSE anthology texts as well as model answers for past papers. So make sure you head over to our course and check it out and sign up for it. But also do visit our website www.firstreeteachers.com for English worksheets, course and materials to help you in this and other areas of English. Thank you so much for listening.